This is Plumbago auriculata, Cape Plumbago. Uh, known for its beautiful light blue flower, as you can see here. This is the end of summer. It's actually uh, September now. And uh, these are still in full display. Look at those blue flowers. Very nice. So, what to know about this plant? Well, this has a lot of variability. Um, you can grow this in cold areas. We're in an area that in the winter, it gets down in the 20s, and when it does, these burn to the ground usually. Um, so, if you're in a cold winter area where it freezes, I, can, I would say that these are probably safe down to the mid to low 20s, and they should still live through the winter. But that said, they'll certainly burn back. Um, they have pretty herbaceous type limbs. Uh, these are almost vine-like and if these have support these plants will grow 10 to 12 feet or higher. I've seen them go up a telephone pole in San Luis Obispo and they were at least 20 feet long. So uh, these can really spread out. Uh, and, and, and that's the thing to think about is you're not going to get the size on these in a cold winter area because you'll only have half the growing season for them to do their thing. Um, and by the way, these are in a, an area where I am in Pleasanton, California, where they do get a cold winter and they do get burned back. And these are probably six feet wide, plus or minus. You're looking at two or three plants in this shot right here. So um, that's kind of what you can expect size-wise out of these. These are only about three feet tall, plus or minus. So. Um, they don't get super large here, which I kind of like. I, I think it's more manageable. I've seen these in Berkeley and San Luis Obispo, as I said, in LA, and these can get quite large. I've seen them on the side of the freeway in LA, and they were probably, you know, 15 feet across and maybe uh, 8 to 10 feet tall. So they hadn't been maintained at all. They were just doing their thing, and they get quite large. There are white varieties of this. I'll try and include a picture of that. And there are also uh, darker blue varieties. But this is the most common one that you will see. And it's this lovely baby blue. And there are clusters of flowers. This flower cluster is about three inches across. And they bloom on the ends of new uh, stems. You see this one here. If you trace it back. so. Also, what's interesting is these old um, flowers, here we go, these are sticky. They're kind of strange, so if you go through them when the plant, um, see these stuck to the hair on my arm? So, just a little sidebar, I don't think it affects a whole lot, but um, they're also self-cleaning. If you look at these, uh, a lot of these splint, spent flower heads, they uh, have fallen off. And so the plant looks clean. You don't see any brown across here. So it's good looking in that regard too. Um, nice as a bank cover, so that if you've got big areas and you're just trying to have something that sprawls out and gives you some interest in a big area, I think these are effective in that way. And uh, just so you know, these where they've planted them are uh, almost totally shaded out. I'm a little surprised to see how much they're blooming even with as little light as they're getting. If you give them more light they're going to bloom even better. But these um, have done well in here. Um, I think that's about it. I'm not sure in terms of deer resistance. Uh, in terms of water, these can take low water. Uh, this whole planting area back here is very dry. There are also a lot of tree roots competing for water and these are handling it that handling that just fine. So I think you can um, be stingy with water and be okay with these. And that is what I can tell you about Cape Plumbago, Plumbago auriculata.